I told you I would be making a video about this one as soon as I finished it, and I did. This is LEGO Harry Potter Years 5 through 7, the sequel to LEGO Harry Potter Years 1 through 4, and like the first one, this one keeps intact most of the spirit of the first game. Now, I already had a recording of this that's about 30 minutes long, and I thought I could do it a little better, I could condense it down a little better. I've already got a series of talking bullet points, and I'm going to try to keep it condensed to just these to help organize my thoughts. I'm going to have a little free period right now just to discuss how this game works alongside the first one. Is it better? Is it worse? Are there pros? Are there cons? LEGO Harry Potter Years 5-7 through seven feels like both a step forward and a step backwards at the same time, roughly putting it on almost exactly equal footing as the first one. Um, I would say that the first one does a lot of things right, but could have done a lot of the other things better. This one um, didn't do a lot of things right, but improved on a lot of things that could have been better in the first one, but didn't improve on some of the other talking points I think could have been improved on in the previous video. Which brings us to those points here. We're going to talk about the first one, and this one's actually a pro, the Muggles. In the first game, um, the Dursleys, the Milkman character, and a bunch of other characters, the Muggle characters, were completely useless. They had no spells, they had no abilities such as digging things with shovels, um, strength to move heavy objects or pull on levers. They could do nothing. They contributed nothing. They were completely pointless characters that were only there to fill out a roster saying, Oh, hey, you could play as the Dursleys. Do you need to? Do you want to? Can you use them to unlock literally anything in any of the levels? No. They contribute nothing to the game. So, in my opinion, I would argue that they feel kind of redundant in the first game. In the second game, they answered a lot of those problems. I mentioned this in the first game, how I um, looked up that the Dudley character had access to strength. Well, a couple of the other characters, the Muggles, have access to the strength ability to pull on heavy levers and do things of that nature to contribute to the levels and be useful in some way. Um, the Dudley character, all of his outfits, the Dudley thug character, Vernon Dursley, I believe most of the Muggles, with possible exception of Petunia Dursley, have access to the strength ability to lift heavy objects and move heavy objects and whatever, so they contribute very nicely. They are very useful characters in that regards to compare with the first game. I would say that this is an improvement. Now, we have the second bullet point here, House Slytherin. In the first game, um, the house characters had a bunch of generic characters called uh, Slytherin Boy, Slyther um, Hufflepuff Boy, Hufflepuff Girl, Hufflepuff Prefect, and go the, across all four houses. And those characters were mainly used in uh, various unlockables, such as when you need to go into the Gryffindor common room, you need a Gryffindor character to, to get inside. Um, to get into the Ravenclaw common room, you need a Ravenclaw character to get inside. Um, and those characters are mainly there for that. Since this game kind of got rid of the common rooms for everything except the Gryffindor common room, you didn't really need those types of characters. Now, there are a handful of those little type of portraits floating around in the levels where you need a character from a certain house to access um, a certain unlockable that's within the portrait, maybe a crest or something. And normally, if they're holding a crest, you need a character from that crest's house to access it. Luckily, if you are knowledgeable in any form of trivia, there are enough named students in here to cover all four houses. So for example, Malfoy is in Slytherin House, Harry is in the Gryffindor House, Luna is in the Ravenclaw House, um, I believe Justin Finch Fletchley is in the Hufflepuff House. So there are characters for all four houses if you needed to use them. And you can tell what house they are by the color, by the color of their badge on their uniform. And most characters have the uniform outfit, with the exception of a couple, a couple of these guys have access to their standard clothing as well as their uniform outfit. Now, this game does um, market itself as having a much higher roster as the previous game, but I would argue 
that they add more outfits than characters. They do get rid of a bunch of characters, such as the Cedric character, they get rid of uh, Victor Crumb, they get rid of uh, what's-his-face, the guy who's in charge of the Durmstrang school. They get rid of him, they get rid of a bunch of characters like, um, what's this other, this is the other, uh, Gilderoy Lockhart, he's gone. They get rid of a bunch of characters and they add some characters, like the Grigorovich character. They add, uh, Professor Slughorn, they add, um, they add a bunch of characters and they get rid of a bunch of characters and they even it out somehow. If you get rid of all the alternate costumes, you would roughly have the same Ross amount of characters that you had in the first game. And it's kind of bad with the House Slytherin characters in regards to their abilities. And it kind of ties into this third bullet point I should have, like, swapped them about, but I didn't think about that. It ties into the lack of unique skills. Um, for the story segments, you learn that Harry leads a sort of, like, a defense against the Dark Arts class since uh, Professor Umbridge in Year 5 has basically banned the defensive spells in the whole school, effectively metroiding your characters and you won't be able to use all the spells that you unlocked in the previous game. And that's a good gameplay mechanic. So, for the characters of the Slytherin house like uh, Blaze, uh, Crab Oil, Malfoy, those Slytherin characters don't have access to the spells that Harry ends up teaching other students, like the Patronus Charm. Um, none of the Slytherin characters have the Patronus Charm. Some of them don't even have the Agua Menti Charm ability. Um, the Agua Menti is a new spell in this game that allows you to spray water to either put out fires or to um, help plants grow. It helps you to progress through levels and stuff. So is the Defendo spell. That's a new spell in this game. And most characters, even the Slytherin House characters, have the Defendo spell. So I would say that that's fine. But the Aguamenti spell, some characters, I think namely Blaze, does not have the Aguamenti spell, nor do the C have access to the Patronus charm. The Slytherin characters kind of felt like an afterthought that got that, that got spat on because they have nothing. Malfoy has half the spells that Harry has access to, which means if you are going to use him throughout a level, he can do half of what Harry can do, essentially making him an inferior character and point almost entirely pointless to use, because anything that a Slytherin House character could do, literally anybody else that has access to more spells can also do what they could do. Which brings me to a desire to have unique skills, for ex especially for the Slytherin House characters. Maybe give them access to a spell that's more dangerous, that's more offensive and dark, that only the Slytherin House characters could use. Maybe even just give the Slytherin characters dark magic, because um, Malfoy was working with the Death Eaters in uh, Year 6 and the first half of Year 7. I would say maybe give him some dark magic abilities, man. Um, you could even have even given Harry the Sectum Sempra ability, even, which kind of like could work as a uh, makeshift of Avada type of ability. But that's neither here nor there, no, there. The House Slytherin characters is a bad choice here. They're basically useless. They do nothing in this game. Tying into the lack of unique skills, there's a bunch of characters in this game that are really important to the story that have nothing to contribute to it. For example, Luna Lovegood. She is a main character for the second half of the series, but she does nothing unique. She ha offers nothing unique, which I would have was was expecting her to maybe have some of those little quirky quibbler abilities and stuff like that. Oh, that only she and perhaps her father, who is also playable in this game, has access to. But they don't. No, I was wanting a hereditary ability, kind of like the Weasleys. I have the Weasleys somewhere, right here. This point here, the Weasleys have access to abilities that only Weasleys can do, but the Luna Lovegood character, who is such ditch, who's so connected to the Quibbler stuff, does not have access to things that only she and her family can do. I was kind of hoping that she would have some access to that. And then there's the big, big problem. I had a problem with Voldemort in the previous game, saying you had to do too much to unlock him, and he did not stand out from the other Dark May dark Wizards. Well, in this game, he technically does stand out, but not in the way that I wanted. 
you unlock him in the final story segment of the game instead of having to basically 100% the game to get him. Um, instead, you just beat the final story mission and go back in free play mode and you get him. You'll get him fine. But why he stands out is that he actually has access to less spells than literally every other Dark Mage character in the game. Um, Dark Mages like Bellatrix, um, Fenrir Greyback, um, the, uh, the Snatcher characters, um, the Tom Riddle teenager character from the second movie, he's back in this game, and he has access to, to spells that Voldemort does not have access to. Technically, he only doesn't have access to one spell, but that lack of a complete circle of all of the spells for a Dark Wizard is kind of rare and weird. Um, Voldemort cannot use the Patronus Charm, which is very strange to me. Now, I get it, the Patronus Charm isn't really useful in this game, except for the final level against the uh, Dementors, because there really isn't anything else in the game that you, you, you fight off Dementors with. It's pretty important in the, in the first game, because Year 3 heavily focuses on Dementors, and they're pretty much all over the place. And they show up sometimes in Year 4, but... In this one, the Dementors were in the first level of Year 5, and they were in the second half of Year 7. But, <sighs> Voldemort can't use the Patronus Charm, which I feel might have been on accident. This may have been on accident, because Tom Riddle, the teenage self from Year 2, who is playable in this that you can unlock, he has access to the Patronus Charm, which is strange. If everything that Voldemort, as Tom Riddle, can do should be something that Voldemort could do, right? But, no. He cannot use the Patronus Charm, which is disappointing. Luna doesn't have access to half the stuff that I wish she had, which is disappointing. Hagrid is pretty much expected. He has the improvement, though. They gave him the crossbow for every level. Any level you want to use him in, he now has access to that crossbow. That is a plus. See, they're making both, both steps forwards and a couple steps backwards. So, the lack of unique skills gets a line. Just a straight line saying, I wish it was better, but it could have been worse. The ghosts, however, I'm going to put an X on right now. And I'm going to tell you why. In the first video that I put up about this, I brought up a desire for the ghost characters that basically contribute nothing to the game to be played to be used, used, used as more useful characters that can maybe fly, like when you get on a broomstick and you could fly up in the air in the first game in certain areas, maybe when you're playing as a ghost, the ghost can fly everywhere, anywhere, function as his own broomstick type of character, he could fly up in the air to do whatever, but no, they can't go through walls, they can't unlock you, go through unique stuff that only ghosts can do. They contribute absolutely nothing to the game other than filling up the roster, and it's basically useless. They uh, don't address the ghosts at all. In fact, they give you less ghosts, which is okay, I guess, because the ghosts don't do anything. Then we have here the Weasleys. The Weasleys is going to get a check mark. It's going to get a check mark because the Weasleys are improved upon greatly. Um, while Percy Weasley and the brothers Charlie and Bill share a single character slot, and they have the exact same skills and abilities, um, other characters such as Ron Weasley, Arthur Weasley, they have unique abilities that only those characters have access to. For example, in Year 7, Ron gets access to Dumbledore's Deluminator. The Deluminator is used in various puzzles and stuff that only Ron can have access to. Arthur Weasley has access to a little wrench that you can use to manipulate muggle machinery to make hybrid magic muggle machines to do various unlockables with throughout all the levels in free play mode, which makes basically makes him essential to every level if you wanted to get to 100% of the game, which is very useful. And then there's also the Weasley joke boxes from the twins, Fred and George, that they have placed all throughout the, the, the castle and various other story levels. Then you will have to have a Weasley character to interact with those Weasley joke boxes to um, get more unlockables and get 100% and stuff like that. So the Weasley characters are vastly improved upon, and I am very happy to see that. I just wish other characters like the Luna Love Good Character had some improvements like that too. And what did I write here? 
here. Redundancies. Yeah, redundancies. Um, there's way too many outfits in this. And while I like that they have these outfits, they treat these outfits as separate characters. I would argue that you should not treat an outfit for a character as a separate character unless that outfit uh, gives that character a unique ability. For example, in Harry Potter years 1 through 4, there is an outfit that Harry wears that basically removes all of his spells and the wand. He doesn't have access to that because this is the outfit that Harry wore the year 1, the very first level, when he, before he learned how to use magic. And if, so long as the outfits are unique in that way, that, that, that depending upon the outfit that you're wearing, your moveset changes, I would argue that if it's just a ch different outfit, then it's the same character, it's the same reskin, so it's kind of redundant to say that that is a different character slot, or a character token. Now, well, character token, I don't know, buying the character or whatever, whatever. But they include those tokens to the character total. So let's say there's actually 50 outfits for all the characters in the game. 50. So if we subtract 50 from the 200 character total, there's actually 150 characters in the game, not actually 200. And that's how I would like for you to set your rosters instead of counting the outfits just count the different named characters you have harry ron hermione hagrid Voldemort, whatever you, the different characters classify as a different character not harry in the green jacket harry in the red jacket harry in the pajamas harry in the swimsuit no those aren't different characters it's the same character but in a different outfit it's kind of redundant to call that a separate character. I'm gonna call it a wash though, because I'm just being very nitpicky. Quality of life would be improving upon things such as the ghosts, um, other characters such as the Luna Love good character, the House Slytherin characters. I would say that you could improve upon all, so many of these things. If you ever made a future Harry Potter game where you combined all seven years and you like, kind of like remade the game, I would argue that you should add more spells, um, add more unique abilities to each of the characters. I would like to have each and every single character have a trait that only that character possesses that justifies you picking this character out of everybody else. Now, naturally, with up to like the 150 characters, you can't necessarily do that for everybody. But for example, all the dark wizards, there's about 10 to 15 dark wizards. They all have a Vada Kedavra. Um, for let's say, and let's say for House Slytherin, you give House Slytherin an ability that only they have. For any Ravenclaw House students, you should give them an ability that only they have. For the House Hufflepuff students, you should give them an ability that only they have. For ex that, that, that that's an example there. For the ghosts, you could give them the flight ability. Uh, you already gave the Muggles strength and stuff to help them stand out. Uh, they added more key characters. There's now three key characters. There's two goblins and Mrs. Cole, who was the orphanage lady who where Tom Riddle was found at. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you could do better, but a lot of this just feels like gripes and nitpicks. Overall, this game is incredibly satisfying, just as satisfying as the first game. It has some steps backwards, but it has many steps forwards at the same time, roughly putting it on the exact same level as years 1 through 4, in my opinion. I would say that both of them are just two halves of the same whole, and are very definitely worth playing.